Hello friends, today we are going to discuss about coagulants and anticoagulants. Myself, Zia Ulhak, Assistant Professor, Pharmaceutical Chemistry Department of Loknade, Dr. Jerry Power College of Pharmacy, Manur Kalvan. So let's start with what is coagulation. So coagulation is the process of conversion of blood from a liquid form into a gel form and formation of a blood clot. Next, hemostasis is the process of cessation of blood loss from a damaged vessel and followed by repair. So, uh, in coagulation process, actually when we see that uh, if you have any type of injuries, your blood is going to be lost. So, to avoid the blood loss, there is a need of coagulation and for the need of coagulation, the cessation process and the hemostasis process is start. The cessation of blood loss from a damaged vessel and followed by repair. So, there are the two types, cellular platelets and protein coagulation factors. In cellular platelets, there is activation, adhesion aggregation of platelets, deposition and maturation of fibrins. Now in proteins that means there is a 14 uh, factors which are used for the coagulation process. In that factor 1 fibrinogen, factor 2nd prothrombin, factor 3rd tissue thromboplastin, tissue factor, factor 4th ionized calcium, 5th Levi factor or proacylerin, 6th unassigned 7 stable factor or pro converting 8 and anti hemophilic factor 9 plasma thromboplastin 10th stored powder factor 11 plasma thromboplastin 12 hagman factor and 13 fibrin stabilizing factor next what is disorders of coagulations in case of bleeding hemorrhage or bursting and obstructive clotting or thrombosis what is it and that if your body is not having any type of coagulation process so your blood loss will be very fast and your whole body will gain, going to be damaged by losing of their own bloods so in case of bleeding we have to stop the bleeding and in case to, in case of obstructive clotting means if you found the thrombosis in your blood or in a your blood streams uh, for example in a case of uh, heart failures there is a need of clearing of your clot which is available in your arteries or veins so you need to be clean those blood clots which are due to those factors and cellular platelets so we have to clean those and for that purpose we have to use anticoagulants so these are the disorders of coagulation process next one normal coagulation process in the normal coagulation process, the coagulation begins after injury to the blood vessels has damaged the endothelium lining of blood vessels. Now blood vessel damage and after damaging a blood vessel, there is exposure of blood to subendothelial space. After exposure, exposure of subendothelial tissues factor to plasma factor 7 and change in platelet. Now what are the types of coagulation? There are two types, primary hemostasis. He hemostasis and secondary hemostasis. In primary hemostasis, platelets for a plug at the site of injury is called primary hemostasis and at secondary, additional coagulation factor, oblique clotting factors beyond factor 7 forms a fibrin stands to strengthen the platelet plug is called secondary hemostasis. Next, platelet activation. In the platelet activation process, endothelium damage occur after endothelium damage the circulating platelet underlying collagen via G protein 6 receptor. Now signal cascade and activation of platelet integrins, in, uh, integrins tight binding. After tight binding the platelet to the extracellular matrix process of adhere and platelet to the site of injuries. That means the platelet which activates directly goes to the site of injury. Now those activation leads to activated platelet release ADP, serotonin, PF, platelet factor 4, thromboxane A2. After it activated platelet also activate other platelets and activated platelets change its shape from spherical to satellite and fibrinogen cross link between glycoprotein and aggregation of adjacent platelets. Now what will happen there is a, if there is a rupture in your skin or in your any body part after rupture the collagen is going to be rupture and after uh, breakage of collagen there is a different different 
types of factors which affect on your rupture skin now the platelet thromboxane adp endothelial cell fibrinogen fibrinogen receptor next von weibel factor platelet plug smooth muscle cell and blood vessels wall these all are required for the clearing of your rupture skin that means the damage which occur due to injury or anything else we have to recover it by using different different factors or platelets next now activated platelets release granular substances and those granular substances activate gq linked receptor those gq linked receptor also increase the concentration of calcium in the platelet cytosol and after platelet cytosol activated protein kinase c which act on phospholipase a2 and after activation modify integrin membrane glycoprotein and increase affinity to bind fibrinogen so we have to bind the fibrinogen and we have to decrease or we have to stop the blood loss next protein coagulation factor there is a two types of pathway in protein coagulation now protein pathways are intrinsic pathway and extrinsic pathway in intrinsic pathway it is surface phenomenon uh, factor 12 to 12a 11 to 11a 11 uh, 9 to 9a 8 to 8a 10 to 10a 5 to 5a prothrombin to thrombin and prothrombin converted into thrombin will converted into fibrinogen into fibrin monomer thrombin also activate factor 13 which activate 13 a and fibrin monomer activate the fibrin polymer which cross linked fibrin polymer which make the extrinsic and intrinsic pathway and due to both of two pathways the our protein wall is prepared at the site of injury next cofactors there is a two types of cofactor calcium and phospholide and vitamin k now calcium and phospholides require for tns and prothrombin complexes to function and vitamin k which gamma glutamyl carboxylase add carboxylic group to glutamic acid residues factor f second 7 9 10 proteins sulfur carbon and z now next one vitamin k cofactor now vitamin k which active form maturation of clotting factor means it maturate the clotting factor and it helps to clot the blood which is going to be lost through your injury site now next one natural anticoagulants protein c thrombin which acts on protein c activate the protein c and after activation the apc protein plus s phospholipid cofactor degraded the factor 5th a and factor 8th a and after degradation of those the our natural coagulation process is started now antithrombin which is serine protease inhibitor also called serpin which can degrade factor 9a factor 10a factor 12a factor 12a uh, sorry 13a now there is a different also types uh, different types of pathways are also available means tissue factor pathway inhibitor now limit the action of tissue factor and inhibit the excess tf mediated activation of factor 7 and factor 5 in that plasmin which convert into plasminogen and plasminogen converted into plasmin the plasmin after from plasminogen its use of tissue plasminogen activate tpa and due to that fibrin converted into fibrin degrade product now prostacyclin now prostacyclin also act on endothelium which release prostaglandin 12 activate the g protein linked receptors adrenaline cyclase cyclic amp and cytosolic calcium level decrease now fibrinolysis it is a process of desorption and reorganization of blood clots now the blood clot which form due to platelet activation factor and different cofactors the fibrinolysis means the formation of fibrin at the site of injury or the clot the fibrin wall which is going to be prepare on the injury side in that we have a different different site of action that means plasmin plasmin converted to plasmin inhibitors plasminogen plasminogen converted to plasmin the tpa factor goes inside the fibrin clot 
and there is a formation of fibrins now we going to be discuss anticoagulants in our next slide or next lecture so thank you very much for listening properly